Before replacing a turbocharger, it is important to conduct a thorough diagnostic check of the engine systems. A lack of power, noisy operation, excessive smoke or oil consumption could result from a faulty fuel injection system, restricted or blocked air filter, a damaged exhaust system, or a lubrication problem. Also, check the engine crankcase pressure. A higher than normal reading requires your immediate attention. For more information on this topic, please refer to our website. If the diagnostic check does not uncover any obvious cause, make sure that an extensive troubleshooting analysis is completed on key areas such as foreign objects, lack of lubrication, oil contamination, overspeeding of the turbo, and excessive temperature. This is important because turbo damage can often be a symptom of an underlying problem rather than the cause itself. Our website has more detailed information on this subject. Next, check the part number to ensure that it is the right one for the engine. Installing the incorrect turbo to an engine may damage the turbo and or the engine and will void the warranty. Careful handling of the turbo is essential. Be aware that some are quite heavy. The proper way to take the turbo out of its box is to lift it by either end housing. Grabbing it by the actuator, rods, or hoses may result in severe damage. Similarly, allowing the turbo to roll around on a workbench may cause damage. The gearbox inside the electronic actuator may be damaged by impact, so additional care must be taken. For VNT turbos with electronic actuators, avoid finger contact with the connector pins at all times. It is also recommended that you use new air, oil, and fuel filters and clean engine oil according to the engine or vehicle manufacturer's specification as part of the turbo replacement installation. When installing the new oil filter, if possible, fill it with clean, fresh engine oil. Also, if it is accessible, backfill the pressure line from the oil pump to the filter. This is particularly important for high mileage engines where the oil pressure line may empty during oil changes. Before installing the turbo, we first need to make sure that all air hoses connected to the turbo are totally clean and show no sign of any damage. For VNT turbos with pneumatic actuators, check the hoses to the control valve and to the actuator as well. For VNT turbos with electronic actuators, check the vehicle wiring loom and connectors for damage since water leakage or broken wires are quite common. This also applies to pneumatic actuators with position sensor connectors. In addition, the air filter and its housing must be completely clean and free from any debris. Next, clean the engine breather system and ensure that it functions properly according to the engine or vehicle manufacturer's manual. For any turbo installation, the following rules must be strictly followed. Please do not change any of the settings or the calibration of a turbo. Doing so may damage the turbo or the engine and voids the warranty. For VNT turbos, do not adjust minimum vane open position under any circumstances. Doing so could cause serious damage to the turbo or engine. Next, ensure that the correct gaskets are used. The center hole of the gasket must be perfectly aligned with the center hole of the flange. We do not recommend using liquid gasket or sealants, particularly for the oil inlet or outlet, since excessive material may enter the turbo, reducing or stopping oil flow. For information on oil torques and installation details, always refer to the engine or vehicle manufacturer's manual for correct information. A modern turbo is highly sophisticated and runs at high speed. 
It is important that during the whole process, you prevent dirt or debris from entering any part of the turbo to avoid catastrophic damage. To start turbo installation, we start by removing the old gasket material from the exhaust manifold and pipe. The surfaces of the flange must be clean and have no damage. Then, remove all plastic or foam blanking plugs from the turbo. Now you can position the turbo onto the manifold or the engine block using the correct new gasket or O-ring. And then, reconnect the exhaust pipe. Tighten all nuts and bolts to the correct torque. Pay special attention to the oil feed and drain lines, which must be totally clean and have no damage to ensure unrestricted oil flow. Make sure that no flexible hose liners have collapsed internally and that the oil feed line is not too close to any source of heat, which may have damaged the oil feed line internally. This is common on some vehicles and difficult to detect without cutting the pipe. We recommend fitting a new oil inlet pipe when installing the new turbo. Next, install the oil drain line to the turbocharger. Then, pour new engine oil into the oil inlet hole of the turbocharger and fit the oil feed line. Spin the compressor wheel by hand a few times. It should spin freely. Note that it is normal to feel some up and down movement of the wheels. Install the inlet and outlet air hoses to the turbocharger compressor housing and make sure that the connection is airtight. To test, crank the engine for 10 to 15 seconds to prime oil feed without starting the engine. Then start the engine and let it idle for 3 to 4 minutes to allow for proper inspection of oil, gas and air leakage. If any leakage is detected during engine startup, please fix the issues immediately. For VNT turbos, please ensure that the actuator operates correctly after startup. During vehicle key on and startup, it is normal for VNT turbos to show movement in the actuator, vane arm, and vane mechanism and it is also normal to hear a high-pitched noise from electric actuators. If no movement is detected, please investigate the cause on the vehicle as the actuator operations have been set and tested before it left our factory. Important note, the gears in our electronic actuators are self-blocking. This means that it is not possible to move the actuator operating arm or the connecting rod manually. Attempting to move these parts with a tool or by hand may break the gears and make the turbo unusable. Damage of this sort is not covered by our warranty. Next, stop the engine and recheck the engine oil level. It is important to make sure that the oil level is between the minimum and maximum levels allowed. After your mechanic has properly installed your Garrett Turbo by following the correct steps, you can expect to enjoy the performance and reliability of your OE quality turbo for many years to come while truly feeling the Garrett difference. To learn more about Garrett turbochargers, please visit our official website.